Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have fifth time, I counted it up, returning guest, Lala Kent. Besides being a professional comedian, you are the person I've had the most on Juicy Scoop. Well, before in all the, fairness, before. I kind of begged you to have me on this episode. Oh, shut. <laughs> I, would, I was wanting to ask you, but you were in, you know, there's a lot been going on. You, you know, you've been open about it. I saw you watch what happens live last night. Before we get into all that, right before we started the show, we were talking about contouring our noses. <laughs> I mean, since that episode, I think it was like maybe three weeks With ago. With Chris Frangiola. Yeah. Yes. And he was talking about overdoing the contour of the nose. <laughs> And now I cannot contour my nose without thinking about what he said. I can't do it. Well, I was saying that I've been doing it since college. Before anybody knew it, I discovered how to do it. And then I said it, I learned a new trick, which is you don't just do the sides, depending on the shape of your nose. You do a little right above the ball, okay? And you kind of shape the ball. And I like to use an eyeshadow brush with a just a bronzer, not a cream not a stick. Okay, so you basically invented the nose contour. Yes. And I do my nose contour the same way that you're describing. So I'm I, I'm doing it correctly. And you have not had a nose job. No. And I have not either. But we both said we would like one. But yes. I have to tell you, so many, many years ago, one of the, the first year of Chelsea, we would go and she would do these like in the field sketches. Okay. And so we went to this guy who is a plastic surgeon and she asked all these funny questions then we cut it together to be like a funny bit right so i was producing that and i'm there and he's checking me out and he's like probably about my age and this is you know it's like 12 years ago and he's like afterwards he's like so when are you gonna come see me and i'm like Holy shit, like almost peed in my pants. Like no one's flirted me and flirted with me in so long. It's kind of like scary. It's kind yeah. of freaking me out. And I'm like, I'm married. And he goes, No, I mean about your nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Oh my God, that must be hard for plastic surgeons and like injectable people that go out and they just want to see. Like I used to have this thing with babies where yeah. I'd want to, I'd have like an overwhelming desire to like put mascara on them, but I never did. I never did the long baby lashes. Yeah, but like yeah. I just kind of was like, if I could you just wing to. out these, like I never did. But I'm like, what is it like for like plastic surgeons and stuff right. to like see people and be like, if I could just give you a little this or that. So anyway, what he wanted to do to my nose was I have like this weird bump. I must have broken my nose or bumped it. Who knows when? Okay, to fill it so that's a. a a more perfect line. But wouldn't that widen your nose a bit? If you do it wrong, yes. See, that, that's an and, and, to say no. And I, I did it right many years ago. Then I let it go away. Then I did it wrong. And I was like, what the fuck? Now I've let it just delete, dilute. I have nothing in it. Right. But my eyeshadow on top of it. You know what? I, <laughs> everything that's on your face works. Don't well, change it. I, I was just saying, I don't think your face has looked better since I've known you. I you think know, you look beautiful. That is so nice of you to say. Because I felt like season, what was it? Season eight. Yeah. I was freshly injected. Oh my gosh. I was such a vibe. Loved every part of my face. <laughs> But this season is the one that everyone is telling me, like, you look really great, which sure. is great to hear. But it's because I haven't been injected since before we started filming season eight of Vanderpump Rules, which was almost three years ago. So let me ask you, as a 31-year-old girl, mm -hmm. um, what were you getting that now you have, like, laid off the needle for three years? Well, there have been times that I've overdone my face. But once we perfected it, like, this is what works <laughs> in my mind. Once we perfected the craft of what Lala needs in her face, I was getting Botox, with the forehead, not above the brows anymore because I already have a high arch. Yeah. I got filler in the cheeks, jaw, and chin. Okay. And then I would get a little lip injection. Uh-huh. I haven't done any of it. Oh, and I think he put Botox so that I wouldn't have the smile lines. The crows. Lines, the crows. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, I do look in the mirror and go, what are what is this? So Why you, is my so, face moving? So you were doing cheeks and all that stuff. Yeah, but the cheeks are tricky. That ages you so much. I agree. And yeah. I think that's what young girls need to really 
Because I think it's all fact. I go to a Dr. Kasabian. I think it's great. I found someone that, you know. He's conservative with the injection. Yeah, but I'll, I mean, if you want it more, he'll do what you want. But like for me, I, I've always been like, I got give me half of what you give a normal person. I got to make it move, yeah. whatever. Um, because you look very, you look incredible and you look natural. Like there well, is a way you. to do it. There is a way to do it. And I, but listen, I want to also tell people, if you did overdo it, don't worry. Just let that shit go away. Yeah, don't keep going. Start fresh. But then it's sad when someone overdoes it. Like I saw Shannon Bedore had overdone it before a reunion. And then you have to Six get it. Six syringes. She had to get it who removed. Who did she go to that Wait, would, and you would know tell who, her? Who also did that? Amy who? Schumer. And and I love that she was honest about it. But Amy Schumer has a very full, like, cheeky, right. kind of pudding, cute, youthful face. So I'm right. like, who talked her into ever needing cheeks? Like, do you think don't it's, let someone talk you into something you don't need? I know, but do you think it's when someone offers? Even I don't care if you have all the money in the world. When someone says the word free, I know you're like banging their door down, and that's <laughs> where it gets hard because then I think sometimes someone contacts you and you're bored, and they go come by and get and I'll free you up. And maybe three months ago you had the cheeks, and they're like, we can give you a little more cheek. Mm-mm. You don't, and that's when you start looking freaky, right? That's when even, you start to look like what's his name in the wrestler. That, that actor and the wrestler, that movie. Mickey Rourke? Yes. Yeah, but even <laughs> the girl. I always think of him when I think of over-injections. <laughs> Is that sad? Yeah. But even the girl on Real Housewives of Miami. Yeah. I forgot her name. Oh, no, no, Lisa. No. Lisa. Lisa, who's married to the uh, to plastic, the plastic surgeon. surgeon. She just she had to went, do a delusion. Yeah, yeah, but she even admitted that she went overboard because she was filled to the brim. Filled to the brim, and she is a really pretty girl. And a, a better in person yeah. and great body. And But especially on TV, and especially on my high-def TV when I'm watching that Peacock show, which we'll yeah. get into in a little bit later in the show, it can look mask-like. Right. Because you fill too much under your eye. It just – like, listen, you might have a little hollow under your eye. That's what a concealer is for. That's like, what a just, concealer is for. You're absolutely right. So, because some of these girls that are like – 22 i'm like no you're 47 and i also think the lip thing is still a great thing but i think the enormous lips are out just a nice little cute where you can have a little more fun when you get a little that's also achievable with lip liner or with give them lala beauty (laughs) that's what i mean that's the only (laughs) lip liner there is on the planet obviously and i love it (laughs) it's all good well guys i absolutely love reading all the comments every Twice a week, every time I do this podcast, and you guys get to watch it here on YouTube. The way to keep that going so that I never don't do it is to subscribe, share, tell a friend, make it worth my while. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about. Okay, I want to do a little hot topic right now. I okay. don't know if you know, but Jamie Lynn, Brittany's sister, right, had a book come out. It's um, a tell all, isn't it? It's a tell all. I know from. Like about seven months ago when all the Britney stuff was going down, this book was already out there and published and going to happen. They changed the title. But now it's out. She what was the Good original Morning title? America. God, I Do you know? I can't remember. Okay, but so it's Things I Should Have Said. Yes. And she had a lot of PR training, a lot of media training, but I, it was pretty juicy. And basically she says, tells Juju Chan, um, you know – I just want to. I want to tell my story. My dad was an alcoholic, so I, that created a lot of anxiety in my life. My sister is ten years older than I am, so she was already. When you think about it, and look, I'm not defending her. Or whatever, I'm just saying she, the, the girl was only like six when Britney was like wearing the the sexy outfits and becoming right. a superstar. Then, and she goes, and then when I got pregnant at seventeen, while being on Zoe 101, mm-hmm. she's like. My family, I mean, she says it very honestly, which I was like, ooh, this is going to be hard for the family, hard for the daughter. The family was all for her, basically, she didn't say it, but basically having an abortion. Because they're very Christian. Right. Make it go away because we're dealing, this is the height of Britney at gas stations barefoot freaking out. Okay. Okay. And she's, she's like, I'm so glad I stood up for myself. I'm like, no, I'm having this baby. And we still don't know who the father is. Oh, we don't of the first baby? We don't. And what do you think she cut him a check to go away? 
That's what I think. I always wonder what the deal was. I right. I hope it's not someone that was older mm. because in that Disney world and in that – Dan Schneider, all those shows that he produced and all that. There's a lot of rumors and alleged things that were not – there were a lot of people that I don't think were the best people working with these young kids. Okay. okay. But we don't I know, and I'm not saying – we absolutely don't know who it is. They right. still don't know. They still so don't she, know. They send her off to some place where she's by herself at 17 so they can figure out how they're going to do this PR thing. And I remember being – at Chelsea lately when we heard this and it was confirmed and they they go she confirms it and they follow Brittany who's you know in her kind of crazy time mm-hmm. or or I won't say crazy come come after me Brittany people in the time where she's doing some strange stuff and they're constantly eating at gas stations <laughs> they they're following they follow to the gas station and they're like what do you think your sister being pregnant and she's like what my sister's not pregnant like she totally well, didn't she had a vending it. machine yeah, I feel like she was at the vending machine, right? Vending machine with like a Starbucks, barefoot, whatever. <laughs> like Daisy Duke shorts, just, you know, she's like, what? Well, this is not pre-. And she she was. And we like freaked out. And so we filmed <laughs> this thing of just like us, like acting like a crazy newsroom. Like it's the biggest. You're like, oh, you're not me. Let's go to party. Like acting so <laughs> insane. But I do feel for her because so I'm is like, the book more about her story? It's her story. Okay, so she's not like talking about her sister, right? And then she says, there, "She's like, what did you think about when your sister posted that she was really pissed when you did that tribute surprise tribute? Did you ever see that? No. Okay, so I guess years ago she's in the conservatorship, Brittany. I think she's per- still performing every night in Vegas." Okay. Looks great, but she's under this conservatorship that no one's talking about. At that time, they had some award show, and she comes out, and they're like, we have a surprise for you. And it's her, her sister, Jamie Lynn, doing all her hit songs, like singing it. And and Britney's like cheering, and her mom's like, isn't she great? So then, just a few months ago, Britney put on her Instagram, like, this really – strong post about like she didn't like it did not like it did not like it did she give a reason i think she just said like yeah i think it was like it was my songs and you're doing it and it was like ambushed on me like surprise but then jamie's like i really thought i think okay to give jamie the benefit of the doubt i think jamie was kind of like there's no way i'm ever going to be you there's no way i could be you right i'm the sister 10 years younger this is a way for me to shine, but I thought you'd appreciate it because you're the big sister. But I it's think, a tribute, I, I think. I think because Britney wasn't in charge of her own career at that time. She was angry. Yes. I could see that. I can totally see both sides. I can see both sides, too. Yeah. And, you know, you throw someone into that level of fame at such a young age. Like, yeah. I totally get the shaving of the head. Yeah. The, like, you feel so out of control, I'm sure. I can right. only imagine, like, a caged animal. Right. But I'm happy to hear that Jamie Lynn's book is more her story than basically her kind of outing her sister. Because I would say I'm a fan of Britney Spears, but I'm not a Britney Spears fan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of hers, but it's not like I'm going to listen to Juicy Scoop and attack you because you may have said one bad thing about Britney Spears. <laughs> and I don't know everything about her, you know? Well, <laughs> I, I just am like, listen, I think she she had the same weird parents that Britney did. Yeah, she had this, and if anything, she would, might have even had more amp, uh, absentee parenting because Brittany at least had two committed parents right. until she became a star, which was I think at sixteen she would have yeah. been six, right? So like, I don't know. And yeah, did she get to become an actress? Did she get to have an opportunity because of her sister made it? Sure, but once you put her, you know. Nepotism and stuff gets you something, but unless you perform every day, and Zoe 101 was a hit. So right. whether you thought she was a shitty actress or you didn't think she was Britney, who cares? They put her in a show. She was making a paycheck. It was a big show. Right. She got pregnant. Then she went away for like eight years to right. raise her daughter. Then the daughter almost died in an ATV accident where she had to like jump in the lake. I remember this. And try to save her. So that was pretty compelling when she talked about that. Then, but... I have to read this book. The original title is what? I Must Confess. Okay, the original title was I Must Confess. From so maybe one more time. Oh, no. Yeah. Good call so, on changing the so title. So now she says the thing that people that are hardcore Britney fans, that are hardcore, you know, 
historians in the Brittany world yeah. would say, you know, how much did she know and how much was she a part of keeping her in that conservatorship? She says – one thing she said in the interview was like, I know as much as I did today as I did when the conservative ship started. Well, how, what does that mean? First of all, how fucking dumb are you? Because we all know more. Like, right. All you had to do was watch one Entertainment Tonight and you knew more. Right. So obviously you know more now, 13 years later, than you but did are 13 they, years ago. But are the Britney stands wishing that she would have stepped up to the plate? Because I feel like I've dealt with people like the dad. Yeah. And sometimes there's literally nothing you can do. Right. You know? And yeah, and she didn't want to deal with him either. No. So I think he seems like a nightmare. I think they have a complicated thing. You think? I think I think she would love to be closer to her sister, but I think the sister. I think Brittany feels that no, she was a part of the machine. Mm. She wasn't there, you know. And then Brittany, she, then but Brittany, the, it just happened. She needs Brittany Spears needs some time to kind of process everything. Well, she's processing of and course. a pair of a. Uh, Sensible brown pumps and a lot of really not expensive outfits. I love either you talk na- about either this. naked or like she's still doing that all, all, every day. I thought that those were just signs. Then she does still like then up? she goes and like has like I don't know an account at some stock photo place, and she posted this. Shall I start from the beginning with a um, with this old fashioned typewriter and some roses? So. Then people think that's a dig to Jamie. Like, 100%. shouldn't I write my book? Yeah, Brittany, you should. You should. And no one is asking you to get on an old-fashioned typewriter <laughs> to do it. Someone will come to your house and literally write it for you as you twirl around and just tell some juicy scoop. Like, you don't need to write it the way you wrote your book or I wrote your book. Like, lay on a couch or spin around. We're going to get this book out. <laughs> yes. She yeah. has to. <laughs> no one's asking you to do it on the old typewriter. You kill me. <laughs> Like, do you imagine how strong, like, old secretary's figures had to be? Yes. Because have I, you ever even tried an old typewriter? Yes, it is, I like, have. It's hard. Hard. Yeah. That's why they had nodulars on their fingers, right? Nodular fingers. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, geez, you can't do it with the nails. Um, anyway, so. Oh, no, no one these days could type on that. Yeah. With those claws that everyone has attached to their fingers. Vanderpump Rules. Watched last night. Okay. Saw you also on Watch What Happens Live. We've got lots of questions for you. Um, okay, my first question is is not necessarily about you. Okay? okay. The last night, the episode was Sheena has gotten engaged to Brock. Okay. She um, doesn't bring her ring to San Inez, which is a beautiful place. Yes, That they stunning. all get these fabulous rooms. You and Sheena are in a hotel because mm-hmm. you're breastfeeding. And <laughs> That's the only reason. The breastfeeding. <laughs> what is not the reason? There wasn't a room for you or you didn't want to be there? I like your reasoning. We're breastfeeding. We can't stay here. No. What is the the reason? I mean, they stay up very late. It's like a rave every time, you know? So, like, I you chose it. Okay. I I don't know. I don't know if there were enough sweets and it was like, whatever. Because obviously, this place is enormous and expensive. I mean, we. I don't think the I don't think I'm killing anything to know that Rachel didn't I mean Raquel didn't write a check for twenty thousand dollars for the weekend so that her friends could have sweets. Right. I mean we're filming it for the show. She shouldn't have to pay. Okay? No. But it still is her weekend event to celebrate her wedding of her now. Ex-fiance. Can I t- can I tell yes. you something though? Do you think that uh, Evolution or Bravo flips the bill for a lot of these things? They don't. But she how, but she how? could very well have. Do and they, really? they may have gotten a discount because it was on TV, but I'm sure that they came out of pocket a pretty penny on, on that engagement party. This is what I'm confused by. But I'm about to get a I free feel shit. like trips and stuff yeah. are covered, but you hosting a party Correct. like your Lala beauty right. yes. abs- like absolutely comes out of pocket, but you might get a deal because someone is like, oh my God, if my liquor could totally. be featured – I'm yes. happy to bring it. Yes. Yeah. You, if we're going on a vacation, the trip is covered and and the hotel rooms. Right. But yes, like a party for the Give Them Lala beauty party, like that came out of my pocket. And also I feel like sometimes, especially with newer reality show stars, when they go like to a dinner with their husband. Yeah. And obviously that's being picked up because it's just a dinner between the two of them. I feel like sometimes the husband like completely over orders. Like sometimes people over order. Food is covered and only up to two alcoholic beverages. That's it. So you can't, can you order a bottle of wine? I know you no longer drink, 
But if if you and I get on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills at some point, yes, and Peter and I are at a dinner, can we order like an Opus One bottle? That's like several hundred dollars. I would probably tell you no. I think that they, that but then house, yeah, Housewives is a different game though. Well, you Peter, know, Peter early in our marriage got fired from a medical sales job because he ordered a seafood platter at a company dinner. So <laughs> I, I definitely don't think that you should push it. I don't but think I, they would cover your Opus I de- One. I definitely think, hey, you you can't decide between two appetizers. I say get two. Mm-hmm. Get two, take a bite. Get two. Food's always covered. <laughs> I don't know why Peter would get let go from his sales position because of that. But they wouldn't be covering no, I, your Opus. I think it didn't help. I just don't think it helped. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, so so they, they go to this thing. And then Sheena and, and Brock... Brock says, we want to get married. We've done the prenup. We got the thing. Um, Sandoval it can be our officiant. Why not Saturday morning of the three-day weekend, we skittle off and get married? And I'm just saying as a viewer and someone who knows how TV works, I'm assuming, is it because they were, without breaking the fourth wall, being like, this is kind of the only time that we can get married on camera with this crew because – we're going to finish filming soon. The only time can be this weekend and have somewhat of a pretty setting. And also, it's going to cause some drama of us doing it. Like, what was the intention? Why not just wait? I felt like Brock was kind of pushing that more so than Sheena. I think Sheena was always uncomfortable with the idea of getting married at the location of the engagement party. So why do you think he was pushing for it then? I can't get a read on Brock quite yet. to To please... The producers are just because he wanted to nail it down. Because uh, she just said on a podcast today, I was listening, that she she was like, yeah, so when I get married, I know which side to stand on for filming because I already got married on Vanderpump before. Right. And she's like me with her good side and yeah. not Yeah, same. Side. I have that. And, um, which and I'm so not were, on my good side So they right were talking now. about that. Thank so, you, Heather. Oh, you're not. Well, too we bad. Have the, too we bad. have the same good side. Uh, How will we ever stay uh, You're 20 years younger than I am, so fuck your good side. Okay? <laughs> so fuck your good side. Yes, I, I agree. get the good side. Okay, so wait, what was she so saying? So she just was like, the way I understood it is that they, they'll they get married. Now, are they married or not married? They're not so, married so yet. they will get married on the next season That's of what the I show. Would've... And why wouldn't you want that as Sheena, as someone who has a good side, as <laughs> someone who's very pretty... And, you know, so what they got married before didn't work out. Why wouldn't you want to, like, and by then the baby might be walking down the aisle. Like, why wouldn't you want that all on camera? Why would you even want to walk down this possible choice of knocking it out on a weekend? I think when you've been on a show as long as Sheena's been on a show, you want what you want just in life. Like, you start realizing, like, this this show is not forever. Yeah. Like, I'm not catering to what the show may want. Like, I want to, I think they want to get married in Bali. If cameras want to come, you're more than welcome, but, like, this is what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Which, but who knows? Because we don't even know if another season's going to get picked up. She could change her tune. Like, it's the same with me where I'm like, I don't think I'm going to come back, but if they were to call me tomorrow, I'd be like, when do we start? Right. You know? (laughs) Right, exactly. Yeah, every day's different. Sometimes, every day's different. Just like, you know, people have that on, listen, people have that on regular jobs where you're like, I'm fucking done as you're driving home. And then the next day you're like, all right. Like, I guess I'll come I'm glad back. I didn't write that email at 2 a.m. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. I have those moments often. Yes. Production will always try to push you in one direction, but yeah. we're not forced to do anything. Right. Like, there's many times that they like, give you an idea about something. And if you're like, that's something, there have been times where I say, I would never do that. And they're like, well, then we don't want you to do it. If it's something that Lala would do, yeah, let's do it. Right. But I still can't get a read on Brock. I still think it was very strange for him to even think about getting married at that location. And they did hijack their like engagement well, we don't party. Know we don't see it yet. What so episode tonight, aired tonight, last epi- night? It, it, it was that it's going to happen the next day. So they're all at, uh, and like, Sandoval's okay, nervous cut that about out. it. I haven't been watching. I don't know well, what episode we're on. Who cares? I think it's fourteen. episode no. 14. So it's the bl- next next week will so, be the finale. Okay, so let me just correct this, okay? Yeah, correct yeah, this. Okay, so let's just. It's hard for me to watch. Okay, so let me just wait. Okay. So 
just to get you up to speed since you lived it. What the only thing we saw last night is that they're thinking they they plan on skittling off somewhere on the beautiful property. Mm-hmm. Just Ariana Sandoval, who's going to perform it, who's ha, is very nerve, like doesn't feel good about it because right. he's like, even if we don't tell them after, they're eventually going to find out and they might be mad. And then Sheena and Brock. So like that's the plan. So we will see that next week. Okay. So I we don't know if it happens or not, but I guess it doesn't happen because they're not they're currently not married. So, but how much people find out, we will see next week. I can't. I'm excited to see people's reactions okay. to next week's episode. Yeah, it's kind of messy. We kind of see a preview of you sort of being like to James. Did you know that they were planning this? Right. So he didn't. And you know what? Maybe in hindsight, I should have kept my mouth shut. But this is Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, I mean, right? that's what it is. We got to see it. And, and like, before the before there was, like, Lala and Sheena or Lala and Katie, like, it was Lala and James. Like, that's my boy. So James was on Watch Problems Live with you last night. So fun. One of the questions they had and one of the questions we have is, I know because I remember I interviewed you way back when that you did have a drunken bone in a shower and something after. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, he seems very thin to me. How was that? And you were like, it was fine. I was don't remember. So a lot of people are thinking you're both single. And then you know, what are your thought on that? I, I don't I, think either of us are mentally there anymore. Like right. it was fun when we were like drunk and acting <laughs> a fool. But now it's like, what are we going to go and do? Yes. Go and sit Perrier at a bar at Sir? Yeah, and then it. You know, 7.45, I say I got to head home to put Ocean to bed. Like, it just, it wouldn't, the piece is not fitting. That along with many other things. Yes. We're not there. Oh, and then you talked about getting back in the studio again. Yeah. What And what was the song that someone suggested? Oh, a breakup song. Like a song. breakup song. Yes. I think it would be fun. Like, I think you should I feel like going it. into the studio is like a hobby for me. Like, what's, your, what's your song that I love that's on my playlist before I do stand-up? Is it, Fuck with you, bullet. Yeah. How does it go? You're going to make me sing right now? Let me know if I can fuck with you, boy. Yeah, yeah sing that just a couple of... What is it? No, no, Heather, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Don't make me do that right now. Now I'm really going to need a cocktail. I think I made you sing like Somewhere Over the Rainbow or something the first time. I made you sing like a classic song the first time. Because I'm like, can you really sing? And it you did. Good. Yeah. Like a lullaby or some yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I like, Take a ja- rain I check like on the that. James Kennedy music. Okay, so then what else is going on? Katie... Wants to have a sandwich shop that Len Lala, I mean, that Randall then was going to invest in. Right. Something about her sandwiches. Yeah. What's going on there? Can, or can you give your opinion of what you thought of that uh, sandwich adventure? I thought it was a great idea because I think that Katie and Ariana need something to, to like, have this, like, their baby. Yeah. You know, their men are off, you know, creating this new bar or restaurant, whatever it is. Like, yeah. whatever space makes you feel like you took a hit of acid before you enter. Yeah. I loved the idea. Then they go to that person for money, right? The right. investment. And it's so hard for – like, I can't watch the show anymore because it's so hard for me to see. Randall. Yeah. It's kind of hard for me to see it, too, because I really liked you guys as a couple. We'd hung out as a couple. I was on your show. But, like, you realize that wasn't real, right? Well, now that's why it's hard. Like, it wasn't real. Yeah. So watching the show and, like, how he's interacting, I'm like, this is, like, scary. Like, it scares me. It freaks you out. Like, right now, my heart is pounding because I'm like, this... Per, like it's it terrifies me. So I mean, let's just talk a little bit about that. You've shared a lot of on your own podcast. You've been really honest about it. We know that the ring was not what he said it was. Right. Um, he, it was instead of well, even with that investment that he was going to put into the bar. Mm-hmm. You mean into this into the restaurant, into Katie the sandwich and Ariana's place. sandwich yeah. place. He was only taking on twenty five thousand, and he was going to split that with his business partner. He had found an actual wealthy person to take on the rest. Right. So But I will say in the in the in the episode, he says, I'm gonna take this to my team. His team of movie makers? But I mean he, he wasn't saying I'm just gonna write you the check. He was said, I I am gonna take it to my team. So he didn't 
he made it like I have a group of people that right. I'm involved with that invest in other businesses. So he didn't say it's all me going to give you the 150 or Well, whatever. the thing about it is the person he went to was actually Katie's friend. That's how how me and and he who we shall not name even know the person that he reached out to to take the rest of the investment. Katie was like well, if that was the case, I could have just gone straight to him and asked him for the investment, you know? So what? So when when this all went down, yeah. which is now, I remember the day, October mm-hmm. 15th. Yeah. And, um, Ocean's seven-month birthday. Okay, well, we... Yeah. I mean, I'm... No offense as a mother of kids. I'm not celebrating Drake's 19th year and four month birthday no but you no but you remember I remember the day vividly because Because I remember sitting at a sushi restaurant with Ocean and being like oh my god she's seven months today is the best day ever like it was the happiest day (sighs) ever and then I get a phone call and my life changed in that moment called you Katie because she saw stuff online or because someone had contacted her first um I believe it was Dumois that sent her images. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and what was your and how did she tell you? I mean, how does a how does a best friend tell a friend? She that said this is online. About she her said, fiance? "Is is Randall in Nash?" She said, "Are you alone?" And I said, "Yes." What's going on? She said, "Is Randall in Nashville?" I said, "Yeah, he is." She goes, "I need to show you some pictures." And the second I saw them, that's when my intuition and my gut started speaking to me like something is wrong. This is not the person that I think that I claim I know. I just something felt very off. And that was just the and then beginning. You, and then it was the beginning, but you also chose to dig deeper and, um, and, and ask for more information. You want to know what's so strange is after those pictures came out, it was like I didn't – I haven't searched for anything. People have come to me. They've either gotten my phone number, tried – DM'd me. Any possible way they can contact me is how they've been getting to me. But I did not go searching. you just started collecting all this Mm -hmm. hardcore text, evidence, communication, photos, stories. Yes. And it's still coming in. Oh, yeah. And you said last night that, and you've said it before, you kind of believe it happened, the shift in him and him not being truthful to you happened after you became sober. Yes. And there there was a comment made, and I, I don't want to say who he made this comment to, but they came to me, and it was after the pictures had been leaked. Um, I was getting my ducks in a row. This person comes to me, and they say, um, Randall said to me, You know, Lala used to be really fun and kinky and sexy, but, you know, then she got sober. And that was like taking a fucking bullet. Being sober is the best thing that's ever happened to me. No thanks to him. So to say something like that and and to have him say that when he has said to me, if you ever pick up a drink again, we'll be done. That's why when I watch him or I see anything... I'm like, this mask cannot stay on forever because I see it now. Mm. Like, for me, I'm looking at him, it's off. But just so many things that happened after October 15th where I was like, how? When I I was in this house feeling like I was so safe, sleeping next to someone who I felt so safe with, the whole time I was in the most unsafe place I've ever been in. And I had no idea. And... Because when we talked, right? Because I texted you that night after my show, after the and because to me, the photos were not great, but they uh, what I the only thing that I was seeing on the internet was, right. uh, you know, your fiance with two appeared to be young girls crossing mm-hmm. the street, and then one like in a lobby. Mm-hmm. So I kind of was like, yeah, this isn't great, right? But. There's no hardcore evidence right. yet, and you were just very, like, emphatic, like, no, I have a, had a feeling. And, you know, and I was kind of like, okay, you know. Yeah. And so then that tells me that even though you say you didn't know, there must have been something in you that then you weren't – because other people well, would I kind be of, like – Well, when, when those pictures surfaced and I called him, I remember that morning he sounded pretty fucked up. 
And he said, oh, I didn't. Before you knew about the photos. Yeah. And he said, I didn't even go out last night. Then the photos oh. surfaced. And I said, you said you didn't go out last night. He goes, those girls followed me. Then it comes out. I met him at a penthouse party. Then my mind goes back to a few days earlier where he refused to show me his room in Alabama. He would not let me see his room oh, when we were like FaceTiming. Face okay. We were FaceTiming. He was in the lobby with no shirt on or in, in the hallway with no shirt on. I was like, let me see your room. And he would not let me oh. see it. And then I was like, and, and the chooses after I say this was weird. Why wouldn't you let me see my room? He demands we go to therapy. We need a therapy session because I'm freaking out. For no reason. Mm-mm. Then it all starts adding up. You know? Yeah. So it's like a plethora of things. But why when you were... Okay, so you get engaged. I go to your engagement party. Right. The wedding's at Pelican Hill. Uh, April, it gets canceled because of COVID. Mm-hmm. It gets moved to July when we had that little thing where we thought COVID was done. That gets canceled. Or you thought it was going to be in July and might be filmed. I remember you told me that. Right. Then that gets canceled. Then you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it was like there was no plan for you to get married. Yeah. And I kind of was like, hmm, I think she might be having second thoughts about actually tying the knot. When Ocean was born... Is when I, when there were so many cracks I just couldn't ignore. There's something about, I think, when you have a baby that you become hypersensitive to everything that's going on around you. And you see people for who they really are that, that are living in your home. And it was just so different. I, I thought that having Ocean. Now, I, we had Ocean because I felt like we were in a good place. After she was born, things just changed. He he wasn't the same person. Maybe he was, and I just was now seeing it for real. But he, I just, I wasn't in it like that anymore. Yeah. And I don't think he was either. I think he liked the thought of me rather than who I really am. Well, I mean, the whole thing is like the brand of Lala and Randall and you know the brand of Lala that Randall piggybacked off of right right but like yeah and it, it you know and one thing you said last night was um you know well i was i was shocked i didn't think that he, there would be somebody that would be into cheating with him right and and i think that's kind of an interesting thing that i said i want to talk about is like when someone is you know clearly the more, you know, aesthetically more gorgeous of the two, okay? And also 20 years younger. And, like, and, you know, I thought you guys made a great couple, like, communicating everything. I thought you were, like, very fun together, and it was a match. But I think sometimes women um, think – you know what? I'm going to go for this guy. He's not He's not my normal type. He's not the cutest one, you know. But clearly, like, yeah. this guy's going to be so in love with me for the next 40 years. Right. Like, I don't have to worry. Like, I might have to with, you know, a GQ model That's or exactly whatever. where my head was. <laughs> I was like, I want to grow old with someone who I know is never going to creep around on me, who I can send out and know he's representing our relationship I was safe with that person. That's what I fell in love with, you know, obviously. And so what I want to get out to people is someone said this to me years ago, and I thought it's so true. And it's like, don't think that going for the guy that isn't that hot or that cute or whatever is going to keep them um, faithful. Right. Because... Quite honestly, lots of times it's the opposite. Now, first of all, there's good guys and there's bad guys and it doesn't. But in this case, when people think that, because oftentimes, sometimes it's the guy that, you know, had a girlfriend at 15, played, you know, never had to, you know, pursue anyone that hard, always had girlfriends, whatever. By the time that guy's 35 and meets his wife, he's like, I'm fucking good. This right. is my wifey. I've played. I've been laid. Yes. I've had, you know, I've had my fun. Like, and I'm good looking, and and those are the guys that like are like 
you know, someone DMs them and they like screen grab it to their wife and they're like, ah, just want you to know, like, you know, right. go away. Like, because they're, they're just like, shit, I don't, I'm not doing anything. You right. Know? And then I think there's guys that didn't have that success in high school and early life. And then their cred really jumps, not only because now they're established and they're rich, but the girl they're with mm-hmm. is a desirable person. So then it's like, well, if Lala is with him, Right. Then, you know, you know, and a lot of girls are awful and a lot of girls just want a story to tell and yeah. a chip on their belt too. Yeah. And so I always kind of thought that like with the Khloe Kardashian poor thing, <sighs> but like so many girls that were like down to get with Lamar, even Tristan, it's also like that, you know. No, they're sleeping that, with them because. That dick was it. in a Kardashian. Correct. Yes. And now yes. I'm one step closer to Kardashian. Right. I mean, even that Julia Fox is with Kanye West now. She was a huge Kardashian fan. Well, aren't we all? Let's not even. But don't like, even get me started on her because now she's wearing the gloves like Kim K. She had oh, on the God. pants. The pants with the, the, the built-in soft, shoe. Yeah. I'm like, okay, now this is becoming like yeah. single white female. But getting back to that, I think that's a misconception when women fall for guys and then ch- and think oh this is a bonus because they're yeah. not you know a typical looking player right yeah and maybe you know i i don't i don't know how that thought process goes like when i'm in a relationship even if i and maybe not fully in it or i feel like things could be better like my outlet is not going and trying to find another dude i think for some people there is and I don't want to, like, throw around, like, sex addiction or whatever, but I think there's something just like a a high that you would get, mm-hmm. whether you – it's just just DMing or actually meeting someone in person, a high you get from attention from the opposite sex, and then put on top of it, now being famous, reality star, famous yeah. girlfriend, and, and the way our media and, and the way you can yeah. talk to people and never have to see them in person and still get like a little bit of an ego boost and I a could high see from that. it. I could totally see that. I think that's very dangerous, mm-hmm. you know? And he did say to me, I got caught up in people knowing who I am. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So who, who knows? All I know is I feel extremely happy. <laughs> Good. I feel so free. Because one of the saddest text messages I had with you was when I wrote you around Halloween. Yeah. And I said, oh, send me Ocean's picture in her Halloween costume. And you wrote, her costume didn't come. I'm just staying at home with my mom. And there was something so sad about the fact that you did order her a Halloween costume and it didn't come in the mail. And I was like, this is the saddest text I did. I had ordered her a Baby Yoda costume. It was like hand knitted. It was so cute. And I'm sure it did come, but it was at that address and I had dipped Uh, out, you know, and you couldn't pay me a trillion dollars to go back to that house. Now, speaking of that, because this is all a public record, but Jeff Lewis did, you were on some of his show and decorate, and he shared on his show um, that. It was sometimes difficult to get the payment from your fiance. No, oh, get in line is what I say. But when that was happening, yeah, I had no you, idea. You had no idea. No, okay, absolutely not. In fact, it was towards the end of the relationship that I was like, there are a lot of people that are like trying to collect payment, and it, it became a thing where they would start saying, "If I don't get paid, I'm telling Lala," because I'm 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 on it. I had I thought that people did work, got paid, and went about their business like normal life. Yeah. No, I had zero clue that that happened. And okay, so what? Okay, um, I've been living in the dark, Heather. My head was in the sand in all aspects of that relationship. Yeah. If it had to do with that relationship, I I had no idea. Because if I if I would have known these things, you would have seen this Lala a very long time ago. And so then, because you had filmed Vanderpump, mm-hmm. and because you had um, shared your concerns, I think like any girlfriend would mm-hmm. with Sheena's situation. But of course, it's on TV, so you right. know, it makes it worse. But that was a natural thing to be like. But then. You are sitting on October 15th and you find this out and within days you've made your decision. Yeah. 
Um, did it make it worse for you? Because you're like, oh, fuck. Like, I was pretty judgmental mm -hmm. about someone else, and they haven't even seen these episodes yet. Right. I mean, I would think for me, if I was you, it would almost, it, it would just be another layer to, like, oh, the devastation of it all. You want to know what's so crazy is during that time, I literally did not care about any any type of troll that was coming for me. I didn't care what was happening on the show. Unless you were bringing valuable information to my DM, scoot along. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even think about what I had been saying on the okay. show. I was tunnel vision. Like, that was it. And I, I think two things can be true at one time. I can express concern for your relationship even though I'm sitting in shit as well. Right. You know, it, it can still be a valid concern even though my life isn't picture perfect over here. You know, we can, we can still voice concerns. Now, do I wish maybe I would have given her the heads up about my concerns before it was like cameras are up? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I definitely should have done that. Yeah. You know? Right. And I mean, I, I like Sheena. I'm happy for her. I think, you know, I want you guys to be fun mommies together because... And we are right yeah, now. Yeah. We're in a great place. I think we're in the best place we've ever been. Good. Yeah. I think that's great. Okay. We have some questions from the... Did Juicy you, Oh, scoopers. okay. So what did you... So... I when I heard that Raquel and James broke up at the reunion, that was the first you were hearing of it too. Yes, and I mean I personally just think they're too young. They're so, very young. So I was kind of like I did not realize they'd been together for five years. I feel like she just came on the scene like two years ago, but everything blends together in my brain. No, they got together. It it would have been six years in. January this month. Yeah, and she was really she went on Sheena's um podcast and she was just really honest about her you know, her family weren't huge fans and you know, yeah. all of the things were kind of and now knowing it and kind of watching this lead up to it. I mean, like I said, I mean, he seemed kind of sad last night, but I think Did he seem sad to you? I think he seemed a little like but I do think they are not meant to spend the rest of their lives together. You know, and I think they both will strive. Yeah, now that they've broken up and I can yeah. look back on their relationship, I just – maybe it wasn't meant to be. He's a lot of personality. She's very sweet and it was just not matching up. This is my prediction for her. Tell me. Um, I think she's going to marry very well and she's going to marry someone – that's only like maybe four year, four or five years older than her. Okay. But she's going to be that girl that I follow these girls at the Real Housewives of OC. They're yeah. not on the show, but they go to like luncheons like every month. Okay. And they just have, but they have to wear a color mm. and they just spend the whole time around like cupcake displays that they don't eat. They're very thin and, you know, and it's just a great life. It, that sounds it's just, like a great life. It's a great, they just it's like, oh, whose birthday is it today? You know, and but and lots of balloon walls mm -hmm. and rose walls, <laughs> and at the fancy houses, and then maybe there'll be mommy friends too. But most of the time, these these people that I follow, yeah, they um, it's just a lot of tiny dresses on tiny bodies. So one time you have to all wear Tiffany blue, and then the next girl birthday is like. You know, light pink. Okay, actually, yes, that sounds like my worst nightmare. But it doesn't. It sound like Raquel could dig it. Oh, Raquel! And would, then she's such a yeah. sweetheart that all the cupcake ladies will love her. Love her. She'll fit right in. She'll yeah. have a hot husband. Yes, who does very well. Yes, he's he does hedge funding or whatever. Yeah, totally. I and, can see it too. And then she just has a great life. I want that for her. Uh, it's happening. It Put is it out happening. there. Okay, okay? It's in the universe. What you talked about that was was it a struggle to stay sober because I did notice you we did drink around you yeah Ryan and I both drank around you I never to the point of like getting wasted or like dancing on a table but <laughs> was it ever difficult to like you know see a bottle of wine being opened you know with like a nice Italian dinner did you ever have that craving no there's only been one time in my three years and some change of sobriety that I've been like, okay, my mouth is watering for Which a drink. Which was that? We, I was in Puerto Rico and we were on lockdown and I was by myself though because I was usually by myself and 
there was just something about it where I was, I think I was just really bored. I called my sponsor a lot and I snapped out of it, but that was the, the only time. Is it a scent like the smell of lime near a tortilla chip in a Mexican thing that would no, make you that, crave a tequila? No, I think I was just there for so long and I was so bored. So Burt Kreischer is a comedian. He did this, this is going around on TikTok or whatever, and I saw it. And basically, he has the same attitude I have about alcohol. Yeah. Like, I love it so much that I refuse to abuse it because he's I love like, that. He goes, I love a Bloody Mary at a football game at 9 a.m. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, yeah. I love a red totally. wine with a steak. I love a Chardonnay at sunset. I yeah. love a, I, when I smell a lime in a Mexican situation, I'm like, I want a margarita. Well, you know what, though? I always say if you don't have to be sober, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, okay. Um, can you share your custody, custody, custody agreement right now? Or No. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, oh, you! someone said that you said on your show that you slid into someone's DM last week. I did. Can you tell? Who can it you is? Tell me after. Or can I you can tell, tell you the, after. Not you can't on tell here the juicy scoopers. Scare them away. Sorry, juicy scoopers. Um, okay, the, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away some from the, some of these. Okay, let's see. Oh, this might be interesting. Does anyone else from Vanderpump communicate with your ex? As far as I know, no one communicates with him. I I know that Schwartz still follows him. Everyone else has kind of wiped their hands. I, it, I it's mean, just look, a situation th- where it's like I, I was forced to tell people, and I hate even being this person, It's you got to pick a side. Yeah. And even if you pick his, totally fine, but just know, like, I don't fuck with you anymore. And listen, I've, I've had friends that have gotten divorced, and yeah. it's very rare that you can still be friendly with somebody, but, like, you pretty much – have to you know especially if you were like a couple that was social with a couple Mm -hmm. it's like well we're picking her and you know like you just kind of have to because it just gets complicated and it's too hard for the person that like if even if it's a friendly divorce and now you're having dinner with the girl and her new boyfriend and then the next night you're supposed to go have dinner with the Mm -hmm. ex-husband and and then they want to know it just puts you in a weird position even when it's not like tumultuous, like your situation, even when right. it's so that's just kind of a normal thing. And I don't think I would have had to do that if it was like, you know, he found someone else that he likes more. No, yeah. it, it's very deep. Yeah, it goes deep. Um, were you in a good place when you were at the Juicy Scoop Live in Irvine? Yeah, I thought we were fine. Yeah, you seemed fine. Um, let's see. Oh, would you date? <laughs> Some people are asking, would you date 50 Cent? Fuck yes. I don't think 50 Cent would date Lala. No, in that situation, but can I which tell was you, one of the 50 funniest. he came out with his song in the club. Yeah. I had the biggest crush on him. And what year was that? Oh, I was young. Yeah. I was so young. I think I was still in junior high. Yeah. And he, I just thought he was the finest thing to ever fall onto the planet. So when that whole thing blew up, because it was pretty hilarious with the 40 he, – he miswrote 50 on a text yeah. about 40, I'll pay your money. And Fofty. The, Fofty. That yeah. was it. Fofty. And then we were looking it up and Annie goes, oh, in this article they mis, um, they miswrote um, Randall's name. I'm like, oh, because they're being funny right. about him, you know. Mis- it. Yes, yes. Um and then you were like involved in that, and that was you know you're very you're very gangster Lala at that point, and my man, and yeah, and so <laughs> oh my god, how do you feel now looking back? Oh, fifty, bring the dogs in. What's That's that how mean? I feel about it. It means like bring the dogs out. Here he is. Oh, okay. You would and, not you would not see me sliding into defend by any okay. means. <laughs> All right, let's get to some other juicy topics. Okay, I've heard about this for years, that men will, will after having sex with girls that they don't want to impregnate, like a one-night stand, yeah. th- that people have said you should put hot sauce in the condoms okay, so that when 
then you throw it in the trash. And then that way, if the girl tries to scoop it up and stick it up her vagina, one, the sperm will be destroyed. But also, you'll know that she tried to do that because her JJ will sting. So according to all hiphop.com, an Instagram model says they met. She and Drake met. They headed off. They boned. Okay. The condom went in the trash. Unbeknownst to her, he did the hot sauce thing. Okay. Her the JJ caught on fire, but now supposedly she's going to try to sue him for a burned the JJ. But what an a hole that she looks like because she was clearly I, trying to get pregnant. Me. These bitches are crazy. Yes. What has happened to women? Oh, the They've other, gone insane. The other thing that women do is they'll provide their own condoms, but prior to the condom, okay, with the hot rich guy. They take a safety pin and they poke it. Oh, my god! So gosh. in the packet, you wouldn't be able to see the tiny poke. But there's pokes in the condoms. Lovely. So then you're like, we used a condom. I don't know how I got pregnant. What? So the guy should always have his own condom. I agree. He should always have the hot sauce ready. Totally. Um, or he just, I don't know, throws it in like a safe or something. Or so she's suing. She's suing him. She's threatening to sue him. I would counter sue and say you're a crazy bitch. Well, and you she, tried to lock me down in a way that I, I, mean, I did not consent to. She comes off awful. But listen, the other thing that men are doing, yeah, that are like because I have a friend who's knows a lot of like hot thirty year olds that are like rich. Yeah, they are freezing their sperm. Okay, and getting vasectomies. And so once they're ready to have a baby with the woman, then they've got their sperm. You can reverse a vasectomy, Or you can though. reverse it, but I would say definitely freeze it at the same time because— Okay. I like that idea. Yeah. If I were a dude who was wealthy and I was, you know, Drake, that's what I would do. Yeah. But then a lot of men are funny about getting their balls snipped. It makes them feel like they're right. not manly anymore. I don't know. They just don't want to do it because it's like ouchy and they're babies. I don't but really know. But it's not what... like they're pulling like how they do it on a dog where they cut your balls off. They're literally just going inside and like yeah. tying yeah. a little knot. So this, yeah. So you're still all man. You know what I don't even know? What? So you still have, you still have like cum come out of you. It's just the, the ones that make the babies are not part of it. I don't even know that. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think cum comes out, does it? Can you look that up? So the cum comes out, but in the cum, there's no swimmers. Oh, I thought that cum was just all swimmers. It's like a different consistency. Oh, it is? She she knows. <laughs> okay, good for you. She's like, I've had both on my face before. Um, you wanted to give me your opinion on just like that. Can I ask you something? Yes. Does what Cynthia... if I said no? Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I would still ask. Yeah. Does Cynthia Nixon direct... Has she directed any of these episodes before? Oh, Mimi. I don't think she was directing when it was Sex and the City. No. But has she directed any of And Just Like That episodes? No, I think this last one was her first. It was not my favorite. Okay. Just going to put that out there. I, it wasn't my favorite because honestly... But you guys, is the show anyone's favorite? It, it's no one's favorite, but we all watch it still. Yes, it's, it's a passion. It's a hate project, but I can't stop. But then there were a couple moments that I did... Like okay, but, so which um, ones did you like? I liked their their like their. I liked their argument like um, at the picnic, and I kind of liked when she was going through the storage stuff with Charlotte. Those two, that, those that was two, pretty heartbreaking. Yeah, right? that kind of felt a little more real. But yeah. um, I love like dissecting it now, and people are like. You know what? Carrie was a freaking narcissist. She always made it about herself to get in some Has dumb. Has she pun. always been so hateable? I just think that we're, like, examining it in a different way with, like, how they'd write the dump. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like someone would be breaking – like, someone showed a clip from the original show. Right. And it was uh, and it was uh, Miranda being like, Steve has testicular cancer and has to lose a ball. Mm -hmm. And da-da-da. And then Carrie's like, well, I got to go to a cabin with Aiden. <laughs> yes. And people are like, yes. You're <laughs> Yes, that's the what I'm talking about. The father of your child is losing a ball, could die, and you're like, I, I can't wear pumps in the in the cabin. You're like, because like, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like I've been watching old Sex in the City, like the original. Yeah, yeah. And Miranda 
cannot deal with being like she is really having a time being a new mom, right? Right. And Carrie calls and she's like, and the girl what made the face. Did I damage him that much? And she's like, Carrie, maybe someone else has time to deal with this shit. Like right. I don't. And then she starts projecting it onto Stanford, and he's like, I've listened to this for four hours. Enough. And I'm like, when did you become so annoying? <laughs> You're truly was that the goal yes, for the writers I, to hate her? I, I don't yes. And then I also think what we don't realize is that, you know, with, with Samantha being gone, I'm like, I don't think Samantha ever really clicked with Charlotte or Miranda. She never really she fit tolerated into the group. She liked Carrie. Because Carrie was her party friend. Right. And so they would party and they'd go out together. She would they, also give her some PR stuff. Yeah. So they worked together and they liked fashion and like she wrote a sex column and, and Carrie and Samantha had sex. But so that way when they wrote her off to be in the alternative universe of, of about that, just like that, which I live in. Yeah. Um, I think that I had said, like, I just think that Samantha was just like, I never even really enjoyed those girls. I tolerated them. Like, you never saw Miranda and Samantha, like, shooting the shit alone. And no. We, and sometimes we have groups of women mm -hmm. where I'm invited to the six-person dinner or right. whatever. Maybe we together, like, two or three times a year. But I'm not, like, on the phone with those three other girls. No. But like, like we like each group. other. We like each other. We get along. They're going to be there uh, at the important events. If my parents yeah. died, they're going to be there. Right. But like, so that's kind of what I also feel when they're like, oh, my God, it's so weird. I'm like, it's not weird. She had the falling out with Carrie. She didn't care about the other two to keep that going either. No, they, they never connected. And, like, yeah. how could you put Charlotte – Solo with Samantha, who all she talks about is come on her face. I, yeah. And Charlotte is like clutching her pearls. Oh, speaking of which, remember when it was Charlotte's wedding? Yes. And, and Samantha was being a bitch like, I don't want to be a bride. This outfit's horrible. And then Charlotte's like, I didn't watch you in the first place. That's right. I just right. thought I had to invite you because we have lunch at the deli once a week. Oh, see, there we go. And I was like, that was no real. No love lost. That was real. It's all been worked out. But I didn't know if you know about this, that the Oscars um, – We'll have a new host, and it's Che Diaz. I – is it Che? I think it's Shay. Che Diaz. Obviously, this is a joke that someone put together. Well, but, can I tell you? I mean, the alternative Shea universe is of Shay. is extremely Shea. hot to me. Okay. Get There's something about it where I pictured myself – Getting fingered and Carrie yeah, Nixon. I was like, that could be fun, you know? yeah. Well, cause are you are you like a little bit bi, right? Or Only when I'm drunk. So unless you fall off the wagon, you're not getting fingered by Shay. No, oh. but you know I, I can still have a fantasy. Okay, but don't you think? No, I I don't like her. Hit. I don't like they. I don't like them. them. <laughs> I don't like them because. They were rude and kind of cocky yeah. and kind of. Almost for sort of like a dude kind of took advantage of Miranda a little bit, and I'm like, I think she it's rude that she loved it. Miranda loved it, but she still was she asked her to do the thing in the mouth. I felt like that was the like I know, but still, Miranda's still married for 20 years. Like, what kind of what kind of good person are you no. that you're fingering some girl that's been married? You know, I if 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 Shay was a really good person, Shay would be like, do you think Shay knows that she's married? Yeah, she knows that she's married. She was at the funeral with the. Well, she was at the funeral, and he was yeah. there. And so I think if Shay was truly a good person, Shay could be like, "Well, hey, now we're going deep." Like I hey, agree. I know how to give every guy, girl, and queer person in Oregon. Like there's certain like lesbian queer people that like you know know their way around a vagina better than the best guy I know. Okay, totally. So congrats on that and the way you work your knuckles. I don't know, <laughs> your knuckles. but. That's great. Walk around cocky like the hottest lesbian in the club that just everyone knows like, oh, my God, go in the corner with her and just fucking get off totally. like you would with your best vibrator. <laughs> That's fine. But she, they, whatever, she should know that she is married and that she should have said something like, listen. Right. Work out your shit. I'm hot for you, too. But she wasn't hot for her. She just wanted to be like, finger her <laughs> and then be like. 
think about that. Like it was almost like, like another fantasize, notch on the belt. Yeah, fantasize about me while I go do 20 minutes in New Jersey <laughs> and then run my horrible podcast. Like the most unfunny podcast. The oh, podcast ooh. is horrible. Yeah, the no, podcast what? is so bad. Like who would ever want to be suffering? Oh, says the cis masculine patriarchal <laughs> woke challenge her. And then, like, Miranda's, like, making a drink at home, like, <laughs> she's funny. <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't. <laughs> really, I just begged you to do your podcast uh. so I could watch you just do your thing. <laughs> but you're right. She should have said, if you ever get divorced, <laughs> then I'll finger bang you. Yes. But she's like, not she's funny. she's treating it like someone that like knows how to like crack a back at a party. Like just, I felt like her comedy on. concert was more inspirational than funny. First of all, the word comedy concert is ruining every comedian want we want to so kill So was ourselves. that even a term before this Never, happened? Never ever has anyone. You would say my net like my stand up taping, so my stand up show, you would never say my stand up comedy concert. Because even a concert, you're able to sit down. I was thinking they added concert to like save on chairs. Like, how the hell are you staying? I think they did it so they could see. I think that it was easier to film, and I think they thought this way we can see all the queer people's like, you know, funky looks. Okay. Standing up. Yeah. And, and then. I mean, that just was so bad when she's like, and there's just one sad binary person. Just one sad. I'm like, what are you talking? Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we don't, you know, we all talk about that when there's that one sad non-binary person. Like, what, what reference are you making? Like, the world is making COVID jokes because the whole world can, re- like, reference it. Totally. Like, let me do this bit about a non-binary. Like, it was just, I can't. But listen, everyone knows Sarah. So this is a joke. The that ceremony is a will joke. Have but I, I posted it in my group, and like half the people thought it was real and freaking out. And I just thought it was so funny. Wait, Lala. Yeah. W- we have more to discuss, so you're going to be part of Tuesday's show as well. But in the meantime, tell, give your plugs for everything that you're doing. I've got your book here. Yes, I have my book, Give Them Lala, which is available wherever books are sold. I have Give Them Lala Beauty, Give Them Lala Skin, Give Them Lala Baby. It's a motherfucking brand, bitch. I got bills to pay. You can follow me on Instagram at Lala Kent. Thank you.